Brian Bendis scripted the Daredevil story uh, that I painted with him. And what, what I'll try to do is I'll try to make it so that it is indistinguishable, um, the writing from the drawing. So it's, it's almost, in my mind, I have to make it so, so that I almost don't draw distinctions from where one starts and another one begins, even, even with the lettering. You know, the lettering uh, is a part of the art. You know, the, the type is part of the image, and the image tells the story. And that's the unique thing about comic books is they're this fantastic hybrid medium This is the old Royal typewriter that you saw um, Ben Urich use in the Daredevil story that I drew with Bendis writing. For a lot of my collage stuff, I save a lot of the things people send me or things that I find and I end up somehow using it, you know, in my work. Um, people send me a, a lot of things, I get a lot of this is where I keep all the fan mail. You know, you, people send little little boxes. This is sometimes I'll, I'll I'll paint something large and then I'll reduce it and put it on a transparency and then I can sort of collage it together with some other things. I try to make a nice contrast between um, how much is is very specifically rendered and what's realistic with the contrast of you know what's a little bit more ambiguous and, and abstract because there's, when you're working on this after a while, you sort of realize if you make everything, if you give the audience 100% of everything, um, there's a certain point where they don't have to think about it anymore. So what I try to do is I try to give them just enough where they finish the idea in their mind. Writing and drawing and painting, that's the idea. The more you do that, the more you realize it's like a conversation with the reader. There's more of a give and take. Some photo reference here. Um, this is from the Daredevil store. It's me posing as Matt Murdock, and there's me as as Ben Urich. There's Timmy. When, when the story opens up, there's this child, uh, Timmy, who he's almost catatonic, and he's just sort of talking in comic book terms. Obviously, something has, has happened uh, in reality that he's not comfortable with. And so his only way of sort of handling it and being comfortable in it is talking about it uh, and relating to the world as if he, you know, he's a comic book hero. So we thought, well, how fascinating would it be if in Timmy's world, you know, Joe Cas it's all Joe Casado art. For the longest time, Joe said that, you know, yeah, he, he's on it and he thought it was a good idea and he's gonna draw these stories. Well, it turned out, you know, with his editor-in-chief uh, job, he just wasn't able to do the artwork in time. So Brian said, you know, well, it doesn't matter. David's going to do it. And he just said, you know, David, do these, you know, just do Joe Casada. He's like, just, you know, you, you're going to do this, but you're going to draw it as if it's Joe. You got to make everyone believe these pages are, are Joe Casada. The interesting thing about this story is that the central character turned out to be Ben Urich from the, you know, from the Frank Miller stories before and from Born Again. We'd, we'd seen him get more and more of a role in some of the Frank Miller and Born Again stories. But this was a time where Brian was really able to give, you know, Ben the foreground and not, not look at him only on a superficial level. You got to see throughout the story, um, Ben discovered why he does what he does, you know, at, at the same time as the readers, you know, do. When I'm in the middle of a book, what I'll end up doing is taking all the book, all the pages that I've completed so far, and I'll sort of, you know, layer them around, uh, you know, the area that I work. And often I'll pull out some other tables that I'll have here, so I'm able to work on, a, a, you know, an entire scene, several pages at one time, and I can see how they fit into the context of the rest of the story.